gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to a slightly different Golden Assembly today. Um, one of the great things about being a fairly young school is that we have lots of firsts, things that happen for the very first time. And today, something is going to happen for the very first time in school. We're going to be putting on a Shakespeare play. Now, I have to say, this is really very, very ambitious because most of the cast, English is not their first language. Shakespearean English is very difficult. Uh, so this is very, very ambitious. Um, but these boys and girls have worked very hard. They were here on Sunday. Can you imagine coming to school on Sunday? They came on Sunday to rehearse. And Miss Ali has done lots and lots of work with them uh, and other members of staff as well. So it's going to be fantastic, lots of costumes, music, lots of language, some of which is quite difficult to understand, but you can just look and enjoy what you're seeing as well. All right, so let's be really good, let's concentrate, let's listen carefully, little ones at the front and not talk, uh, and let's hope that we have a, a great show. So without further ado, Miss Ali, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Welcome to our Midsummer Night's Dream Play. My name is Hamnet Shakespeare, son of William Shakespeare, whom some of you may have heard of. It is one of my dad's plays we are going to put on for you this morning. My dad sends his apologies for not being able to be here. He's busy in London, or so he says. Much ado, much ado about nothing if you ask me. But I will do my best to try help make this a performance, even the great bar will be proud of. So without further ado, watch him. Now, fair Hippolyta, our natural hour draws apace. Oh, it will seem a lifetime, but a lifetime I must wait. No, wait, I met first. You smell. You, you too. So who goes there? Demetrius, in love with Hermia. Lysander, in love with Hermia. Egypt, in love with the Union Lord. And full of vexation. This man had his daughter condemned to a nun's life. Or be executed. Just because he refused to marry the right man. Me! No, not you. You, I know what's best for you. This when? Oh, this family of domestics. Don't you just love them? And when all we want to think is about domestic bliss. Some chance for this lot around. So, Hermia, heed my word. To you, your father should be as a god. Pardon? Am I hearing you right? Perfectly right. Relent me, Hermia, and my son will yield. Never, but wait. If you two love each other so well, why not be satisfied with each other and leave me and Hermia alone? Such a disrespect that I thought perhaps somebody taught these two a lesson. I suggest we lead them to it. How now, brown cow? Hey, you got me script. But I'm my poet. Shouldn't I show it? Just because his old man fancies, he's a bit of a playwright. Like, I could have written a better script than this. Returning to the script, if you please. The course of true love never did run smooth. Ah, with emotion again. The course of true love never did run smooth. So what are we to do? Never fear, I'm here. And that's meant to reassure me. I have a, I have a plan. I also have an aunt. She happens to live just uh, outside of Athens, so? But he get married there instead. Not just a pretty face. The sinew, you're supposed to be in love with me. And so our happy couple, uh, and so our happy couple plans are open, and there our play might have ended with these two riding off into the sunset together. But if you have to go and open your big mouth, I seem to remember you two helped spill the beans. No matter, he only meant help. I mean, what of this in school? My dear Mrs. Susan, how I'll never be. <coughs> if I have a different colour, you will always be forgiven for calling her dumb girl. Had to tell me about the plan, as I wouldn't go straight to Demetrius. And so our two couples set off for the woods. Hermia and Lysander, supposedly in love. Demetrius and Helena, Maso. Phew, my dad sure knows how to write a complicated plot. But now for some light entertainment. No, I mean really light entertainment. Dad, what were you thinking? Is all our company here? Company? Did I say in light entertainment? Forgive me, I meant simple. Meet the player, don't you see what I mean? Watch out. You're to be Pyrrhus. And a very fine hero, I mean. To be sure. But though. You're to be this beard. What? With this beard? I don't want to play a woman. Don't! No! Mm, neither 
Fabulous. Fancy. Bristle. Yes. Yuck. Order. Everybody gonna play the role they are given. Thank goodness. A little lost party. Maybe I should let this man take over from me. Oh, sorry, kind sir. I'm just a lowly craftsman. I never enjoyed the education you enjoy. Call it enjoyment? Okay, so who else do we have in this monthly crew? Roar! <coughs> I bet you can guess what part I am going to play. Well done, Master Snack. I see you've been practicing. Let's just hope he doesn't forget his inhaler on the day. Nothing worse than an asthmatic lion. And don't forget me. I oh, oh, please excuse me. I have a lot of calls. And you are young Tom Snout. Well, how did you guess? But I bet he won't get to the first right place. So will anyone else ask the question? Why? He is a wall, as anyone can see. Why? Thank you, Snout. May, may I say, I have never heard the final roar. Well, that's the spirit. You just all need to do your best. And that's not difficult if you're the best. <laughs> so meet me by taking down a peg or two. So meet me by the palace woods a mile without the town. Well, it would be a bit odd if it were with the town. <clears throat> so just meet me in the palace without the town. That's Starling here. Oh, don't you worry. I'll be ready. I'll be the purest moonlight. <clears throat> I should hope so. But uh, you just all need to do your best. Oh, what a treat we all missed. So, fast forward. Come now. Brown cow, that's my line. Sit down, you fool. This isn't your scene, so don't make one. Continue. <coughs> How now, spirit? Make one to you. With a little bit of this and a little bit of that, as they say. Hmm, not in my script, they don't. Oh, come on, where's your scene so far? Well, if it's mischief you're after, look no first. Shut up, woman. Sounds like some other folks could do with bit lighting up around here. No thanks, your queen has stubborn ways. And what about your king? Took about acting spoiled. Why should my queen be bullied into giving at her changing boy? Something tells me she won't have a lot of choice in the matter. <laughs> I'll miss Van Moonlight. Proud Titania. And very nice to see you too. My dear. Come, Titania, do not play games with me. Where is the boy? Where well, you cannot find him. You think you can better mother him than I? Silence! Give me that boy, or else. What was I saying about bullying tactics? <sighs> I've heard enough. Fairies away. <gasps> that went well. So, what are we to do, Master? Oh, don't you worry. I have a plan. Go fetch me a purple flower. Here, touch page 25. That one. Got it? Now go. Yeah, I know. Just <coughs> get around about the earth in 40 minutes. So then you turn it to me. So that I may wet my sleeping queen's eyelids with, with magical juice. And when she awakes, she'll follow the first ugly piece that comes along. Hmm? No more water. This I must see. Okay, okay, so what about the 40 minute girdle? Here it 
to as much as you go. Good, and I hope you are again. While I'm anointing my queen's eyelids with this magical juice, you are to do the same for an Athenian lad somewhere here in this wood. He's playing hard to get, and frankly, given the duty for his would-be girlfriend, he sees eye testing at the same time. Oh, these mortals never seem satisfied with, right, with what is right in front of them. I'll find them next time. Let's hope you awaken soon and can warm up with a bit of blood and grace. Well, 
Oh, it's the workers again. Are we all mad? Aye, this green vlog gotta be our stage. Let's begin. <coughs> Not so fast, my dear friend. I have few worries about ah, the ones are way. Why did that I knew that before? Firstly, there's a question of me killing myself. <laughs> That's the answer for all my prayers. Secondly, the roar of the lion. Why? So, with all my gore in here, no, there no, there won't be left any audience here. So what do you suggest? I feel it like you're gonna tell us anyway. How lucky you are to have been of my brain, of my intelligence in your team. I thought it might be. I'm gonna tell the ladies that I'm not gonna kill myself. Bottom, the beaver, live on. And the lion must also survive for the ladies. My best friend, Snag the Joiner. As long as I don't have to say too much, you know, my tongue lies in my roaring, not in my speaking. Don't worry, that's why I gave you the part. Uh, excuse me, but can we get a move on? I missed breakfast this morning. Also, that's where you were. Oh, Starveling, do you ever think of anything apart your belly? Well, occasionally, when it's not empty. Oh. You don't think about anything about yourself. Why do you even complain about him? Well, wear this and think about everything. Oh, that's all, guys. Oh. Elsewhere in the wood. Action. Ah, so what you mission accomplished, your queen allies, the donkey headed the workman commands. Excellent. So what about your other task? Oh, here they come now. Let us stay hidden and admire your handiwork. Uh wait a minute, that she would have to pain. What have you done with my life, Sandy? <coughs> have you killed him? If you were dead, would you love me as I love you? So brute. Me forever. <sighs> In the meantime. Nice one, Puck. You've only gone and dropped the juice on the wrong islands. But, but. No buts. Go find Helena and the other maiden so much here in this wood. It is time to untangle this mess. Now, this should do the trick. Here she comes with the other teen in Africa. <coughs> Something tells me this is going to get worse before it gets better. What more can I say to convince you? No more, you can't see that. No bounds. I tell you in good faith, I love you all the time. And he certainly doesn't. Oh, Helena, goddess nymph divine. You too? Why must you mock me so? Hey, no one's laughing here. Go find Hermia. You may have her with my blessing. Why Hermia? I want to get Helen on you. There you go. You left him, just as you left me. What's the matter? Our suitcase better still be there when we get back. I'm not going anywhere with you. Pardon? You're all in this together. Shame on you. I don't understand. Lysander, let's go. Remove your clothes, cat. No. Remove your spikes, bruh. Never. Get off, you serpent. Well, someone's done work on you and very thorough, she 
you ask for this? Dwarf, acorn, oh, smallest and meanest of all creatures. Why you? Cut, cut, this is meant to be a comedy, not a tragedy. Our caretaker doesn't want to be mopping up any blood from his nice clean floors. So let's start to wind, thi let's start to wind things up. What would my dad have? Oh, I don't know about anybody else, but this dream is ah, beginning to send me to sleep. What would my dad have to say? Hamlet! Hamlet! Speak of the devil. Hamlet! Dad, so you made it! Stop! I. Oh, you miss your big day. Well, you seem to have enough trouble remembering my name. How many times that is Hamlet, not Hamlet? Hamlet! Hamlet. Oh, where have I got that name from? Oh, I just had an idea for another play. I must go and write it down. You carry on. Uh, so on with our play. Scarper, you lot. I think we've all heard us enough bickerings to last us a lifetime. Puck, you know what to do, and do try to do it right this time. Don't worry, I will. By every means of my disposal, I will all reunite, and when they all sleep in soundly, I will pour the juice on my son to so that it is her way of sleeping beside him when he first awakens. And all will be happy, and then maybe I can go get some rest. Oh, no, so fast. I knew it, no place for the wicked. Oh, huh, wicked? Maybe I'm mildly mischievous. I mean, you don't mean to myself, right? Just don't do it again. Now, I have my own manners to attend to. Some magic, I will not have 